Hello, my name is Helmut Prosch. I'm a thoracic radiologist from the Medici University of Vienna in Austria. I'd like to share a case with you of a patient who presented with a recurrent pneumothorax at our center. So this is the story of a 38-year-old male patient who presented with a recurrent pneumothorax. So in fact, it was the second pneumothorax on the left side. The pneumothorax initially was treated with a uh, drainage and a couple of months later he presented again with a pneumothorax. His history was otherwise unremarkable, all his lab values were normal and he reported to be a non-smoker. Importantly, and this is always important to inquire in patients with a diffuse parenchymal lung disease, he had no known exposure to allergens or toxic fumes. So let's look at the CT scan. And what you can nicely appreciate here on the CT scan is that most of the lung parenchyma looks quite normal. However, there are these very dark areas which are cons uh, corresponding to very thin walled cysts. And most of these cysts are either round or show a lentiform shape. If you look at the distribution of these cysts here, you will appreciate that most of these cysts are either close to a fissure or close to interlobular septa. On the left side, there's this number thorax. And if you look at these cysts, which again are very, um, most of them are very close to the uh, pleura, it is understandable that these cysts are responsible for the pneumothorax. Whenever you are dealing with a diffuse parenchymal lung disease, it's always important to look at the distribution. And by looking at these coronal and sagittal displays, you will appreciate that there is a clear lower lobe predominance on both sides. There are some more cysts on the left side than on the right side, but these cysts are primarily located in the lower lobes. And again, you can also see here that most of these cysts are located close to the pleura and many of them show a lentiform shape. So what is the diagnosis in this patient? And to make a long story short, the final diagnosis in this patient is bert hoch dubay syndrome. bert hoch dubay syndrome is quite a rare cystic lung disease. However, we see it from time to time in patients presenting with a pneumothorax or a, or a recurrent pneumothorax. Importantly, this is an autosomal dominant inherited syndrome, which involves besides the lung, also skins in the form of hamartomas there, and kidneys in the form of renal cell carcinoma. And these renal cell carcinomas vary quite from patient to patient, so there are several histologic subtypes. Importantly, patients with this diagnosis need to be followed over time in order not to miss the development of a renal cell carcinoma and thus the, important, the diagnosis of this syndrome is quite important. So whenever you see cysts in a basal predominance, think of this syndrome. So what are the differential diagnoses? And there are just a few. First of all, it's lymphangiolymatosis, which is also a cystic lung disease characterized by the presence of thin-walled cysts in a quite random distribution all over the lung, so there's no basal distribution, but you see these cysts all over the lungs, and it involves primarily females. The important diagnostic clue to lymphangiolymatosis are angiomyolipomas, so fat-containing uh, tumors in the kidneys. So again, here in this cystic lung disease, you may encounter cyst, uh, kidney tumors, but these are fat containing in contrast to the renal cell carcinomas we see in bert hoch dubay syndrome. The other differential diagnosis would be lymphoid interstitial pneumonia, also cystic lung disease with thin walled cysts. And like in bert hoch dubay syndrome, you frequently see a basal predominance, but this disease is frequently seen or usually seen in the context of Sjögren's disease, lupus, or also HIV. So the clinical context is quite different. Only very, very rarely, lymphoid interstitial pneumonia is seen as an idiopathic disease. Quite different from bert hoch dubay syndrome is Langerhans cell histiocytosis, also cystic lung disease. But in Langerhans cell histiocytosis, the cysts are not as round as we see it in all the other cystic lung disease, um, diseases I mentioned so far. The cysts have a bizarre shape, are thin or thick walled. In addition to the cysts, you see also some nodules in many cases. 
and importantly, there's a clear upper lobe predominance in most of the patients. You see a sparing of the costophagic angles. And importantly, in adults, it is almost exclusively seen in smokers. If you want to know more about cystic lung disease in general and bird hog to base syndrome in particular, there are a couple of uh, literature uh, papers here. And uh, with that, I'd like to stop here and I wish you a nice day.